What is the first image that comes to your mind, when you hear the word horse? A heavy horse galloping with a swinging mane and flowing tail, in ceremonial barding or armor. This is how majority people envision a horse of the Middle Ages. As our global entertainment media has reflected an ongoing fascination with the so-called Dark Ages, the medieval horse has increasingly graced our screens large and small in recent years. Braveheart. A Knight's Tale. Lord of the Rings. Game of Thrones. King Arthur. And numerous other films, television, and computer games, depict the drama and romance of the Middle Ages. The knight on a horse is the visual focal point of these productions, but what were these horses actually like, and how do they compare to modern horses? Today, we will give you an in-depth understanding of the medieval horse. Horses were rarely thought of as breeds during this time. Instead, they were classified by type. Either by identifying their function, or their physical attributes. As a result, many of the breed names used now had less defined, broader connotations in the middle times. Horses were measured in hands rather than inches, with each hand standing 4 inches tall. The average horse in the Middle Ages stood 13 to 14 hands tall at the withers, and, to us today, would seem like a pony or a little horse. But then, the men and women of the Middle Ages, would look small to us as well. The Destrier was the best known war horse of the Middle Ages. It was renowned and admired for its capabilities in war. And it carried knights in battles, tournaments, and jousts. Because of its significance, it was dubbed a great horse by contemporary sources. Large and hot-blooded, great horses were bred specifically to be courageous in battle. By the day's standards, they were around 15.2 hands tall. They weighed around 1,200 to 1,300 pounds, which is about the size of a modern show horse. To carry fully armored knights, as well as their saddle, tack, barding, and weapons, these horses had to be large and strong. Sometimes, destriers even attacked other horses by kicking and biting. A good destrier was very expensive. During the Crusades, a fine destrier was worth seven or eight times the price of an ordinary horse. Less than 5% of the war horses were destriers, which were owned by a small elite of the most wealthy knights. A courser was a swift and strong horse that was commonly used as a war horse during the Middle Ages. It was ridden by knights and men at arms. Coursers were generally preferred for hard battles, because they were light, fast, and powerful. They were valuable horses, but less expensive than the highly prized destrier. They were widely used for hunting as well. The Roundsey was an ordinary all-purpose horse. They were trained for riding, but could also be used in battle. It was not unknown for them to be used as pack horses. Squires, men-at-arms, and poorer knights were common users of Rounceys. And a wealthy knight would provide Rounceys for his retinue. Since not everyone could afford to possess a horse, Rounceys were usually available for hire. Elegant-looking, mild-mannered horses with a smooth gait, were bred with other horses of similar temperament, to create amblers, also known as palfrey horses. Palfreys were not a specific breed as horse breeds are understood today. A palfrey was a type of horse that was highly valued as a riding horse, by the upper classes in the Middle Ages. They were very comfortable to ride on long journeys. During the Middle Ages, a palfrey was the most expensive and highly bred type of riding horse, sometimes costing as much as a knight's destrier. Consequently, it was popular with nobles, ladies, and highly ranked knights for riding, hunting, and ceremonial use. However, they were also used in battle, because they could move quickly and easily even on uneven terrain. Knights would ride palfreys to battle, in order to keep their heavier warhorses from becoming fatigued during combat. The most beautiful palfreys were saved for parades, and their grooming was given special care. A dray horse was a large horse bred to work hard tasks, like hauling, plowing, turning mills, and other farm labor. They were known for their plodding gates and immense strength. Some were 18 hands high and weighed up to 2,000 pounds. They were massive and powerful, but they all had patience and a docile temperament in common. Throughout the Middle Ages, a variety of work horses were used. The pack horse transported belongings and equipment. The cart horse pulled wagons for trading and freight haulage, on farms or in military campaigns. These horses were strong, but short, 
docile, and easy to control. Small horses called genets, were first bred in Spain, from Barb and Arabian bloodlines. They were well liked as riding horses for women, because of their quiet, trustworthy character and size. Genets were also ideal for pilgrims, because they ate less, and were easier to care for than larger palfreys. Ponies were horses that were bred to be small, strong, and hardy, to pack coal in or out of mines. When you see a medieval painting, you can tell it's a pony, if a rider's feet hang noticeably below the mount's belly. However, throughout the Middle Ages, the names, horse and pony, were used interchangeably, and not in the sense that horse breeders use them today. The transition from light cavalry to heavy cavalry in the early Middle Ages, was both precipitated by, and dependent on, the arrival of equestrian equipment from other cultures. Instead of horseshoes as we know them, Roman horses wore hippo sandals, which resembled a metal boot for the horse's hoof. In a list of cavalry equipment from AD 910, there was a mention of crescent-figured irons and their nails, which was the earliest clear written evidence of an iron horseshoe. Horseshoes were frequently used in Europe to protect horses' feet, by the 11th century. And by the time the Crusades began in 1096, horseshoes were widespread. The development of the nailed horseshoe, made it possible to travel farther and faster on horseback, especially in northern Europe's wetter regions, and it was useful for campaigns on a variety of terrains. Nailed horseshoes also increased the effectiveness of dray horse teams, by offering support and protection. Saddles were initially just leather pillows, that were belted onto the horse. The solid treed saddle is thought to have been created by the Romans, possibly as early as the 1st century BC. By the 2nd century AD, it had become widely used. The medieval saddle had to be larger, with a higher front and back than earlier saddles, due to the heavier weight of armored knights, in order to prevent the knight from falling off his horse. By distributing the rider's weight over a larger area of the horse's back, and away from its spine, the solid treed saddle helped to make riding safer and more comfortable, for both the rider and the horse. The use of the solid treed saddle, also made stirrups more effective. By 477 AD, the stirrup had been invented in China and was in wide use there. Stirrups first made their way to Europe in the 7th century, mainly due to invaders from Central Asia like the Avars, and by the 8th century, European riders had adopted them. Stirrups allowed riders to sit on the back of the horse more securely. Standing in the stirrups allowed riders to swing swords and shoot arrows, with greater force and accuracy. This was a huge advantage that turned the tide in many battles. With the aid of spurs, a rider could direct a horse to move forward or laterally, by kicking or nudging the horse's sides. The knight had to use his legs and feet to control his mount, because his hands were often occupied with weapons. Wearing spurs was a privilege reserved for knights, and a symbol of rank. A young man was said to have won his spurs when he achieved knighthood. Horses were a huge advantage in battle. Soldiers who rode horses were much bigger, faster, and stronger than combatants who fought on foot. And horses, like the warriors who rode them, needed armor to avoid injury. Steel armor was worn by knights and their horses throughout the Middle Ages in Europe. The armor for a horse was called barding. The horse collar was invented in China in the 5th century, made its way to Europe during the 9th, and spread widely across the continent by the 12th. Agriculture underwent a revolution, as a result of the padded horse collar. One horse could plow the same amount of ground with a wheeled turned plow, as two oxen could in a single day. Two horses could finish the work in half the time. During the 12th century, this resulted in higher yields per acre, and greater prosperity in Europe. The knight was the foremost horseman of the Middle Ages. Generally raised from the middle and upper classes, the knight was trained from childhood, in the arts of war and management of the horse. In works of knight literature, knights were frequently depicted as heroes who embodied courage, loyalty, and honor. They also upheld the chivalric code of conduct. These legendary knights, such as Joan of Arc, King Arthur, Richard the Lionheart, and Edward the Black Prince, continue to fascinate people today. 
In aristocratic households, the marshal was in charge of all matters pertaining to horses, including the upkeep and management of all horses, from the chargers to the pack horses. He also oversaw the hunt and travel, hired all the grooms, trainers, stable boys, and stall muckers, made arrangements for the fodder, and helped buy and breed horses. The constable, also known as the count of the stable, was another member of the aristocratic households. He was in charge of the household security, order, and military force, and, along with marshals, could organize haste to loots and other chivalrous events. There were also farriers, horse dealers, hackneymen, grooms, and many other horse-related occupations. A sizable portion of the population worked in occupations that used or cared for horses in the Middle Ages. The study of the medieval horse has wider ramifications for how we perceive that period. The horse defined the Middle Ages in Europe, just as much as cars and the internal combustion engine define our age. The medieval horse was a lens through which ideas about gender, class, and most importantly, morals and knightly virtues were shaped and expressed. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos. And please leave a message if you'd like to learn about any other legendary stories involving horses or knights from the Middle Ages.